Hey guys, that's Letter Magic here, and let's just all take a second to celebrate Mark's 20th year at Wizards of the Coast. What a period of time it has been. Them 20 years just flew by. So naturally, only about 16 days after the dead center of 2023, he's looking back at 2023 and reviewing it. You do you, Mark. So um, he does the highlights, the lessons, and then like some other stuff and breaks down each set. And it's usually like really accurate while also being really misleading and really half-truths. I guess that's the way to do it. Like he, he cuts it down to what really went wrong, but then tries to like also cover his own butt. And then we don't know if he's like misinterpreting it or if he just got so close. He's like at the finish line, he just like sits down. I think that's the best metaphor for it. So... Since this year was awful by financial metrics, customer satisfaction, everything, it was an utter disaster. Let's just skip the highlights because, like, we leaned well into nostalgia. We were bold in set concepts. Okay, I think we can all agree we can skip that and go straight to the lessons. So the overall magic design, the three lessons that he says they learned were the sets were a little too creatively insular. So what does he mean by that? He says, this is the flip side of the sets being so nostalgic. Uh, I think we were a little too insular in our themes this year. If you'd never heard of Dominaria, which remember, like, when was the last time we were there? Seriously, just saying. Uh, the Brothers War, the Phyrexians, any of that. Or if you weren't aware of all the planes of the multiverse, this year was a bit daunting. Yeah, it was a little bit of fan service, but with this level of lore, you know, you either learn it, get back into it, or ignore it. I mean, I, I don't really have a problem with that. Unlike past years, they remembered to have somebody write the lore. At all. Unlike Battle Bond, and I want to say those other two. I can only think of one, but I feel like there was two. Good for them. Small steps. But he did mention that, like, th they didn't do any... Like, genre clusters or story tropes, as he put it. So just, like, really simple, oh, I get it. And he's framing that as a bad thing, so okay. And he says, every single set this year came with a little previously dot 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 explanation, and that's not ideal for a game that's growing as fast as magic. That's why they need to cycle through some of the oldest people there and stop looking back and get some fresh ideas. Mark is clearly out of good ideas. I think we learned that in Ikoria. And he says, yeah, it's crucial that new players find things to identify without a lot of reading first. Because I, I guess if I were to infer what he meant by that, because his statement does stop there, because they're not going to. Now remember I said, he gets to the bottom of it, but also tells half-truths. You need people to be interested in the game at all. You need the current players not to be quitting and bad-mouthing it online constantly and saying how much they hate it, it's too expensive, too many sets, wallet fatigue, out-of-universe garbage that's now an eternal, no ban list, out-of-control power creep, one extra year tacked onto the, 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 the rotation... And a complexity level and an entry level minimum price point that is so ridiculous that now, I mean, fast forward past like 2021 into 2023, nobody plays competitive standard constructed. I never thought I'd see that day. Nobody is holding that for FNM. Standard is dead. The only thing that's keeping it alive is um, Arena, and people are leaving that in droves. So saying we need people to not have to read the lore. You don't have to read the lore to play the game, okay? In fact, you don't even need to play the game to read the lore. It goes both ways. So to say, we need new players to be that, and that, that should be like a high priority. Uh, no, you need them to not have like for every three people that leave the game, one person joins the game. And nobody's teaching their friends how to play right now. Because one, there's nowhere to play. And two, there's nothing to play. Because standard is an embarrassment. You need a computer to track what the hell's going on. And then you just get beat by an all-control deck or a blitz deck. It, it's sunk down to that and then some really obnoxious overpowered mid-range. So unless you really like drafting or really like, I guess, formats that you police yourself, which don't make Watsy any money, yeah, this is why we're in the place we're in and it's getting worse. Magic's going to be dead in five years. That just is a fact. But he's concerned about the level they might have to read. Oh boy. So next up, the sets were more polarizing than normal. He starts with, while I'm a big believer that individual cards, themes, and mechanics can be polarizing, in other words, he thinks it's a positive thing, if you were to like read that a different way, we must be careful how polarizing entire sets are. We want our sets, especially the premier ones, which is standard, uh, to be a product that has something to offer for every Magic player. Yeah, not everybody enjoys control at a complexity level where you don't even know what number, what boost, and what delayed trigger, and this with that, and ugh. I could play those real heady games, but it gets real, real annoying when you try to teach somebody new to the game them. And now that standard, like the premier set, literally that's what they call it, the premier league format, whatever, is unplayable and untouchable and unapproachable, you're screwed. It's dead. 
and going to a three-year rotation was the last thing you ever possibly should have done. But he goes on to say, I appreciate the boldness of this year's sets and how focused they were in their vision, but we must also ensure we're not creating premier sets that make too many players go, I'm sitting this one out. Once again, he's half right and he's telling a half truth. People are like, I am not going to play in a, a mono black discard format. I, I'm not going to do that. Get rid of this crap, Liliana. I'm not playing against a three drop that takes cards out of my hands repeatedly and gets rewarded for it. I'm not going to do that. That card should have been banned in modern. Phyrexian Obliterator, you literally just can't play against it. Hadi Jin, you extremely literally cannot play against it. You're not allowed to play your deck against it. You won't resolve anything. You won't stick anything. When you do, you won't be able to remove their 5-5 ward threat. And then they're drawing cards on top of it and getting rewarded for it. And then we get to enjoy that for another year. Like, do you see where this is going wrong? But he's saying, oh, polarize against tire sets. Yeah, there, there were sets this year, or in 2023, it kind of reaches into 2022. I guess Mark doesn't know how time works or calendars, whatever. But, like, compared to other sets like Ikoria, where people are like, this is trash. Companion is garbage. Get it out of my game. I'm quitting. Compared to that, in his recent memory, his biggest screw-up in the last 10 years, easily, where he went on a 19-hour Twitter rampage against the fans, trying to defend it, and then, like, apologizing, finally saying, fine, you guys are right, it's inherently bad, fine. That's what it took for him to stomp off like a little toddler and have a, a tantrum for almost a full day. And he's saying that 2023, the sets were too polarizing? Um, the mechanics were pretty mundane, dude. I think he confuses like, well, this must have failed because of the lore. This must have failed because of the art. This must have failed because of the story. This must have failed because of the, the timing. He has a different excuse every time, but none of them are power creep and bad designs. So he's hinting at it, but he's not getting there. The third one, the third and final thing, he says, there needs to be more synergy between sets. No, standard constructed, there needs to be less synergy, less power, less... Like, oh, look, more fuel for my control deck. Oh, look, more fuel for my blitz deck. Oh, look, more fuel for Desolator's stupid candy cane deck, which is double strike boost. I can win on turn three. You've seen me do it. And if I don't, I'm winning on turn four. Completely and utterly unacceptable in any kind of standard format. It's too fast. It's too powerful. And every time they're just like, here, have, have a little slightly bit better boost card. There you go. You got 5% mathematically better. You can't do that. So once again, the last thing we should have done is tacked on another year to this. That's ridiculous. So what he says is, this has been an ongoing theme ever since blocks went away. Oh, that's to blame, really. We want consecutive sets to have mechanical overlap so that you can continue to update a deck as new sets come out. So that's actually provably false. If you've been watching my channel about eight years ago, I did a whole bunch of features on like, you guys realize what's happening. And then I predicted BFC what I thought was going on. And then I was completely right. I said, you want the next set to undercut the one before it, or at least like after two. So present one, have that be the new power thing after rotation. Do one, maybe don't undercut it with that one, but then maybe wait another one and then undercut everything. Creatures shine, almost no removal. And then you let that go. Post rotation, all the removal goes out. And then you have big giant Eldrazi Titans, but you can't give them all hexproof. Ward didn't exist. And so all the individual kill spells were like, uh, blow up multicolored, uh, blow up a creature smaller than this. They didn't want the Eldrazi to come out and just get absolutely obliterated by a little two cost spell. They couldn't let that happen. You weren't going to see like go for the throat. So they purposely padded both sides of that. But then shortly after BFZ, very shortly, they're like, oh, here, have your kill spells back. And then nobody played Eldrazi crap anymore. It was like, oh, I could just blow them away. Okay. Then they push like mid range synergy buildup over time, where, you know, kind of like devotion, where they're like, okay, you can kind of get like better, 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 and then a little couple destruction set you back, but it doesn't completely ruin it. It's not an, you know, glass cannon. And then the next set, they're like, yeah, we just upped the speed by like 50%. You better watch out because every deck's going to blitz, every deck is haste. First strike, combat tricks, let's go, 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 go. And they speed up the format to speed out the other perfectly good mid range decks. And then after that, kill spells, early game removal, and control. Or just life gain. And they'd push that. And they would do the cycle where, like, every one to two sets, the one after it would undercut the big beast before it. And this was by design when the game was low-powered, non-complex, and very predictable. They still got it wrong once in a while, but now the absolute free-for-all where they don't know what the heck's going to go on. So they're just like, I don't know, throw Liliana in, throw Phyrexian Obliterator in, I don't know. Throw in, everyone gets a counter for free during your upkeep for three mana, ongoing, no tap, no trigger, no payment, no downside. That There you go. And, I mean, I'm going down so many rabbit holes here, but 
People wanted faster games on Arena. That's what they got and as their player feedback, allegedly. So faster games, tons and tons of powerful cards, and the game's over quicker, so you could jump in, jump out. You're not stuck in a game for 30 minutes like you could be in paper. That's what they wanted. That's what the fans wanted. That's what they did. Now, standard's dead. So what they should have done is seen that downside right away and said, uh, okay, well, let's not do that. Let's just enforce slow play and, and roping and do AI detection statistics. Start giving people little five-minute timeouts to think about what they're doing with a little warning that it'll get worse if they do it again. Done. That's what they should have done. Or brought back extended, because modern is a beast. There's all these things they could have done, but him saying we need more synergy between the sets, we need everything to build on everything, well, then it gets more powerful, more synergy, more powerful, more synergy, more powerful, more synergy, and soon you can only play three decks. If you play anything else, you will lose. So what they actually need is less synergy, and not just less synergy, but actively destroying the sets before it. That's what worked for years and years and years, ever since I started playing since 2013 onward up to, I want to say, 2017-ish. So he knows that. He's been around that long and he's a designer. He knows darn well that what he's saying isn't true and that's what really pissed me off about this. So he says, we did have some mechanical themes like artifacts, Phyrexians, etc. run through multiple sets this year, but we also had other themes that were too linear, too focused on a single set. But that keeps it from getting out of control when you have like 14 sets legal, Mark. I'll admit this is a hard problem to solve as each set has so many different factors that it has to address. Let's just focus on that for a second. Yeah, if they go way too draft focused and make it balanced for draft, um, they, they miss stuff like Coco. That's the, the one that they admitted. They they built it for draft. They thought it would be a fun little stupid thing that nobody would play. And I could name about four other cards that they openly admitted this was built for draft. Oops. Then it got into construct and just wrecked everything. Focusing on two different goals at once, you're going to make mistakes and they shouldn't have. I'm not saying draft should go away, but I'm saying that standard constructed, the thing that people actually play way more often, should take huge precedence over draft. And if it's a bad draft set, oh well. Drafters factually do not spend more money than standard constructed people. That is absolutely proven uh, in paper. So yes, he says, uh, many different factors it has to address, but it's something we need to learn to do better in the world of each set being played in limited by itself. Oh, he actually mentioned it by name, limited. Wow. So if you're, once again, read between the lines of what he said, draft killed standard constructed because we focused on that too much in some sets. Oh, well, oops. Got to get those short-term gains drafting on Arena because you got to pay every time. Drafting on MTGO because you got to pay every time. How's that working out for you in a business model? So he does break down per set uh, what went wrong. So Dominary United, uh, I'm just going to go over the bullets, not like go way into this, but lessons learned from that. The set felt a bit generic for some players. It's Dominaria, get over it. Uh, the set had a number of flavor-related issues. Like, there were legendary creatures in the set, but some players felt not enough of them had lore built around them. Nobody cares. And, oh, some people wanted more Weatherlight crew in the story. That has nothing to do with if the set sells. That's just, like, whiny people who care about the lore in the story may or may not even play the game and will anyway. It doesn't matter. And then you went and put Walking Dead and Transformers and crap and My Little Pony into the Commander, so... Where was caring about those people's thoughts and feelings then, okay? I know those people took it the hardest. And then third, Limited had some issues. What, that I keep winning at it? Is that what, if you don't draft black-white, you just lose? Okay. I've done more drafts of Dominary United than any other set ever. So when he says some players felt it was too easy to splash other colors of mana, claiming that too many players were playing some variation of green domain, so green plus other stuff, having a green base splashing other colors for the domain cards, there was also some certain that there was a bit too much recursion. Graveyard recursion? There's like three or four cards and they're all in black. Black is really dominant, but if you don't pair it with white, you lose. So like, yeah, draft black, white, and win. I mean, it was just like uh, Midnight Hunt. Draft, green, red or lose. Those were your two options. Oh well, you done messed up. In quick drafts, it's absolutely hilarious and kind of fair and even. In paper, boy, everybody who goes those colors loses because you're splitting it. But for him to say, no, green was the problem. Green was not the problem. I played up against a couple people that were ranked pretty high that were going green base, especially green splash others, but they were so slow, I just murdered them. And when they got out their big chunky creatures, I would blow them away. Black, white. Control, flyers which flyers dominated and life gain and ambush like you could not get beaten by a 6-6 just because it was big and scary you would just ram into it boost survive death touch whatever live through it fly over it heal past it take the hits it was insane spell spamming domain with heavy is it colors was like the worst i saw 
besides my own decks. And like I said, I've got like five or six, seven and something finishes. So then it goes on to Unfinity. Um, this is hilarious. Some players appreciated that over half the cards were eternal legal. That's what he put in highlights. Lessons. Other players greatly disliked that there were eternal legal cards in the set. Yeah, more disrespecting of the lore and the seriousness of the game, ruining standard. I mean, commander. That every they ruined everything. Who cares? And then uh, the set had too much complexity. Uh, I mm, I don't know. Stickers had several logistical issues. Did they? Players complained that the stickers were legal in Eternal. Yes, that was a logistical issue. You absolute moron. So, Brada War, um, what are the lessons, or what, what are the highlights was we upped our bonus sheet game, dude, just shut up, just print your horizon set and your reprint sets and let standard alone, that is not a plus, okay, that's crap. Lessons, the set was hard to connect to if you didn't know the source material, that is true, I didn't know what the hell was going on, uh, and I didn't even read the lore, because I'm just like, some people are into it, I'm not, and I don't care, because I don't know what went on, because I, I didn't play back then. And I run a giant freaking magic YouTube channel. If I don't give a crap, that's a problem. And I'm mostly into the lore at this point. I still didn't care. Uh, he also says, Limited was a bit fast for a set with a theme of giant robots. Yeah, it was hard to get the fatties out. And then the Transformers uh, cards felt out of place. Really? Did they? He's just throwing, like, backhanded, thinly veiled, passive-aggressive, like, throwing Hasbro under the, the bus stuff into here. This is, like, the third time. It's hilarious. Anyway, uh, Phyrexia, all will be one. The first highlight is players generally enjoyed the Wii working of Poison. Who the hell were you listening to? It ruined the game, and it needs to be banned immediately. Nobody even plays it anymore because of the power creep. But it still needs to be banned, because after the August 7th ban, people are just going to go back to playing it. Lessons. The Phyrexian flavor was off-putting. People were like, too bleak, quote, icky and scary is basically what it was. They, they didn't like them. Okay. The set was too parasitic within the confines of standard. I'm not going to go into trying to define what he considers that to be, but it's, I don't agree with it. Um, limited was too fast. I'm not sure I drafted that at all, actually. So sure, I'll take a word for it. March of the Machine. Uh, lessons. The story was too big for one set. Absolutely. freaking lutely The Frexians were too easily defeated. I mean... So once again, lore, lore. How about balance? How about the cards? You're bouncing around, dude. You gotta look at why they're not selling it. At the end of the game, 40 and slip. At the end of the day, you make the game, you shoehorn in the, the, the lore to fit it. You design a card and then say, what in the lore can we make be this thing? You design a character and then what in the lore can we make be this thing? You have to start with the balance of the game first. You can't go, like they say, top down and start with, well, we want it to be this. And then, so let's, let's design it this way. Let's start with the lore and then design cards around the lore. And then hopefully nothing bad happens to standard and nothing is overpowered. Oopsie. Oops. 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 Well, we don't want to ban anything because that makes people mad on Twitter. And then I have to hear about it for like four hours. And I'm Mark Rosewater, and I can't get off of Twitter. Let's just ramp the power up to, to make it even. Let's just undercut it with something even faster and even more impossible to beat. And then people just play three decks, and people net deck anyway, because that's who I listen to on Twitter is stupid net deckers, not random people. No exit survey for people who left the game, and asking them why to find out that they left because of the people that you're listening to and catering to. But yeah, lore, lore, and then the third one is limited was too complex and a bit bomby. Yes, it was a disaster. It was Rare Mythic win, and it was a couple overpowered on commons. It was trash. And all the synergy was loaded into the rare slot, too. That was annoying. But for him to say the Frexians were too easily defeated, did you see the amount of damage they did? Like, they got to be defeated in one storyline. You're not going to blow up the whole plane for, like, three quarters of a year. A lot of people died. They gave up their, like, sparks and, like, come on. It was not easily defeated. But, yeah, you did have your little female Mary Sue because, you know, you know those females and their battle-hardened, high-testosterone, ooh, defeat-the-enemy uh, attitudes. That That's that's definitely how biology works. And you're going to cram it down our throats till we uh, believe it. Yeah, maybe that's his little, little backhanded insult, you know, compliment, whatever, however you want to say it. About how, yeah, it was crap that just one person came up, became a super overpowered Mary Sue super angel, and then just stabbed her in the face and win. Yay, woo. That was kind of BS. But, I mean, if you look at all the different planes and the ways they fought back, it's like, yeah, she just thought 
Oh, I, I can take over everyone because I'm perfect and I'm so much better. And look at look at all my forces. Woo. Oh, wow, this magic, that thing. Now everyone's asleep. Now everyone's doing this. Now everyone's fighting. Now there's dinosaurs. Oh, my God. And then they show up to her door and, and kick her ass. That That's exactly what you would expect to happen. So I do not agree with his assessment at all. One single bit. And he knows the story better than I do. He's just really stupid and lazy. So March of the Machine Aftermath lessons, the set was too small. Shut up, no, it wasn't. It, it was unnecessary is what it was. Most players didn't like paying the same amount for fewer cards. Really? The set was solid, or was sold, pardon me, it was not solid, was sold as story-focused, but not much happened story-wise in the set. Yes, it was just a stupid Horizons Masters set. Uh, many players seemed unhappy with the Planeswalkers losing their sparks. Yes, everybody was pissed. Everybody. I was so put off by it. That's one of the major reasons I didn't read the story. So that's it. That's the end of the article. So um, he doesn't really wrap it up. He doesn't say he'll do better in the future. He doesn't have a plan to undo it. He doesn't even mention the state of the amount of active players. Nothing. He's just like, oh, there were some pros and cons. It's been another year. Okay, bye. G give me my paycheck. Thanks. I can't wait for him to retire or get fired. It's got to happen eventually. He knows Darwell is not qualified to work anywhere else. He wasn't even qualified to work at this job, but... He's that wacky, zany cheerleader guy who's a Steve Ballmer wannabe if Steve Ballmer had absolutely no idea what he was talking about and had no new ideas and thus designed complete crap and then just started trolling people and only caring about his ego. You know he brought Poison back that one time on Finn because he wanted people to stop saying that it's one of the worst things ever. Like, he himself put mechanics at 7 plus on the storm scale, which means we're never doing them again, basically, and then brought them back to prove it wasn't inherently a bad idea. It was just a bad thing. I'm not a bad designer, and I'm going to prove it to you. And then he posts delusional crap, like I said earlier in the game, where he's like, people like the new version of Poison. No. No, they did not. Losing on turn three to my poison deck unassisted is not enjoyable, you absolute moron, and that's what went wrong the first time. Alternate wing cons that were too fast with too much boost, and people just play one thing, okay? The first time around it was crap, the second time around it was crap, just admit it, it's crap. You designed a garbage mechanic, just like you always do, that's why there's a storm scale, just you tried something, you went too far, move on, never do it again. He's like, no, 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 revisionist history. I've got to, before I retire, i got to fix my ego. I've got to prove to people that this wasn't bad. I bet he's pushing every single set to bring Companion back. That was his biggest failure in all of Magic history by far, just based on his reaction and his statements. So you'll know that they've completely lost it and just gone off the rails on a crazy train when they let him bring Companion back. So... Yeah, wish I had better news, but like I said, Magic's going to be gone in five years. You're just going to have to deal with it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.